Shabbat Shalom. This week's parsha, of course, the central event is the revelation at Har Sinai and the uh, giving of the Ten Commandments in a sort of preparation for this great one-time event. Kaddish Baruch Hu gives Moshe some instructions, including uh, the setting boundaries for the people so that when this event transpires, and of course all 600,000 and more are there witnessing it, and no one will pass a certain uh, limit that has been set to be the uh, maximum uh, proximity as close as one can get, one's allowed to get to Har Sinai. Then, um, just as the uh, event is about to begin, HaKadosh Baruch Hu uh, tells Moshe again to go down and uh, raid Ha'ed Ba'am, go down and warn them again. Moshe says, I already told them that. I mean, now you gave me this instruction a few days ago, and I told them not to, you know, not to, not to, not to, not to pl- pass whatever bounds that we have set. And as the Rav Salavetia points out, Hakadosh Baruch Hu simply ignores Moshe's reply and tells him a third time to set boundaries for the people. The Rav makes a, a big deal of this. The Rav thinks that the setting boundaries uh, is the central point of the central issue, not only of the revelation at Sinai, but of the whole Torah. It's almost as if if Rabbi Akiva would say, kamocha, the Rav would say, Pen Let me just read you a few lines of what he wrote. Uh, but before that, the Rav also said that these boundaries are not, it's not a fence, and it's not a wall, and it's not a ditch, and it's not even uh, signs, you know, no, no moving, no trust, no passing beyond this point. It's simply a mental thing that you tell the people you can go only so far and no further. And it's in our minds, it's our conscience, it's our morality that will keep us from going beyond the bounds that have been set. The Rav says, apparently God did not want the people to refrain from ascending the mountain because a physical barrier blocked them. He thus commanded Moses to descend and warn the people so they would restrain themselves because of Moses' command and not because the physical constraint. And then <clears throat> the Rav goes on and says, as I said, this idea is a major motif in the Torah. The prohibition and warning alone are enough to prevent a Jew from transgressing and doing and doing wrong. The Rav says then that 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 this is the, the, the essence of the of the whole Torah. He says God had emphasized to Moses that the whole Torah is Contained, contained in the words al yehersu, not to break through. The whole Torah consists in setting boundaries on human behavior, on the behavior of the Jewish people, so that we respect what the limits that have been set, and we respect it out of uh, our obeying our own conscience and obeying our own tradition and morality. Now, of course, other fortunate have paid attention to the psukim, the three psukim that speak about setting bounds and certain features that we expect Mephoshim to pay attention to. For example, the Maharal, the Maharal of Prague, he said he knows, he paid, he knows that, 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 that the Kodesh Baruch has repeated to Moshe the warning that uh, the instructions that he gave him before the day of, of Matan Torah. And he says, well, this, you know, this is a common thing. Sometimes you have a, a, an event, a big event that you're planning for, and you, you, you read the instructions to the people at a meeting that takes place sometime before the event. But then, on uh, the day of the event, you you know refresh you refresh their their memories and you you go through the instructions once again, so everyone will will know what they're supposed to do and what they're not supposed to do. So there's no really issue here. There's no real issue here that 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 the instructions have been repeated again on right before the event. Others have paid attention to a change in the language of the in, of the prohibition uh, of the, of the construction to restrain the people and set boundaries that the Rav uh, didn't uh, decide to address. The first instruction, the one that Moshe got uh, before, several days before the, 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 the revelation, said, uh, set boundaries on the people. But the ones that came right before the, uh, the event at Har Sinai uh, said, you know, et etahar, set boundaries on the mountain. Now, this, and we always have to pay attention even to these small, seemingly, 
uh, uh, you know, in minor differences. Uh, and the Nitziv, for example, says, well, the first instruction, set boundaries on the, on the people, that's, you know, to get them arranged properly. The Aaron and the Kohanim and the Zakanim are in the front rows. And then back we have, you know, the, the uh, rest of the people. And this, so the so Baltar Zaham is to have the people maintain a certain order. But the Baltar Tahar is, you know, to, to point out one way or the other where, what are the limits beyond one point one is not allowed to move. Now, on this last point, I want to share with you a very interesting, odd, and as far as I know, not very well known, uh, Ibn Ezra, on this issue of the change in, in language between Big Balta et Am, Big Balta et Har, between sending boundaries on the people and sending boundaries on the Har, on the mountain. It, yeah, ben, ben Ezra talks about this, and he says that I, I've gone on to, got it into this because and I read it in Hebrew, This man says that, he, that, that, that uh, the, the proper thing for Moshe to say in all three instances was set limits, set boundaries for the people. But something happened to Moshe when he was repeating the, the instructions in the second, the last of the two uh, psukim, the last two psukim, and instead of saying, uh, set boundaries on the people, set boundaries on the on the mountain. And this is odd because it, 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 it calls to mind in a, in a strange way, not precisely, but in a strange way, this notion of satanic verses that the uh, Muslims have with regard to the Quran. Some of you who are, not that young and not millennials may remember the novel of Salman Rushdie called The Satanic Verses. It caused a great controversy and almost cost the Rushdie his life. What are the Satanic Verses in the Quran? Uh, the, according to uh, the Islamic tradition, of course, the, the Prophet Muhammad was going around in Mecca uh, trying to get people to uh, to, to abandon a voted Zara, abandon idol worship, abandon polytheism, abandon what they call an Arabic shirk, and and, and and start to worship the one God. And he would go around even to temples. There was a full lot of temples to all sorts of different idols in Mecca. But one time, one time, when he entered a temple, which was uh, in which the, the idols that, 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 that the people worshipped were actually uh, swans for some reason. They had, they had these figurines in the shape of swans. Uh, something happened to the prophet and uh, the devil got his tongue, as they would say, the, shay- the Iblis, the Shaitan, uh, took hold of, of the prophet's tongue, and instead of uh, denouncing these idols, he praised them. So these are called the Satanic Verses, because Satan, or the Shaitan, or the devil, or whatever you want to call it, Satan, uh, took hold of the prophet's tongue and had him say something he didn't want to say. Now, this is not quite what what this uh, Yitzch- this, ma- this Meshuga where elsewhere uh, Ibn Ezra calls him Yitzchaki uh, Hamavil. Uh, no one really knows who this is. Some sort of, uh, you know, uh, prototypical biblical critic who went through the Torah and said this this was this should be amended to that. This should be amended to that. So he he said, you know, something happened to Moshe when he was about to tell the people, you know, uh, are about to record the instructions for the God from Hakadosh Baruch Hu, to set boundaries on the people and came out, set boundaries on the mountain. This is, and Ibn Ezra says, is, you know, total nonsense and he's gone to some length just, just to let us know that we shouldn't pay attention to this type of nonsense and foolishness. And of course, it's it's total heresy from the point of view of, of the Rambam and, and uh, uh, that, that to think that, that, that anything could have been in, within the Torah that, that Moshe didn't want to it didn't want to say that it wasn't exactly what the Kodesh Baruch told him, but the idea itself is interesting. That and it actually fits well with what the Rav said, that the boundaries are on the people, not so much on the mountain. Don't forget that according to the Jewish tradition, uh, Mount Sinai was holy the Shata, not Latid Lavo. At the time of the Revelation, Mount Sinai was the holiest place on earth. It was a capital crime to go beyond the boundary point that had been fixed. 
But after the revolution at Sinai, Mount Sinai became just another geographical feature. There's absolutely no prohibition or restraint in going up there and having a picnic and pitching a tent and, 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 and doing what you want to do. And so the, 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 the real uh, uh, mitzvah of the Dorot, which, as the Rav said, is not just a mitzvah of the Dorot, but the essence of the Torah is really the boundaries set on the people, that each of us have these boundaries within ourselves, inculcated by the Jewish tradition, inculcated by the Torah, inculcated by all of, 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 of our Torah Shabbal Peh, that set boundaries on, on, on our behavior and set limits on what we can do, and we respect these limits and don't transgress them because of the dictates of our conscience, not because of, of a wall, and maybe not even because of a threat of punishment, but because these, uh, these are what this, this setting limits on human behavior and getting us uh, to restrain ourselves, hopefully so that we can put our, our spirit, physical and spiritual and mental resources to the proper uh, uh, tasks, is really the essence of Torah. Shabbat Shalom, and thank you for listening.